Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, before we get too far into the video, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that really helps get my channel promoted. And I appreciate it. Um, today I was going to do a multi-project video, and I thought it'd be fun to take uh, three sets of stones that are all the same and make three different types of earrings with them. Uh, and these are all going to be post earrings, but I thought it might be fun to see the different kinds of styles we can come up with. So um, we'll do that today. and. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to thank some groups of people. First, the first group is my Patreon. Uh, I wanted to thank those patrons over there. They're kind of my core group of supporters. They've developed this really nice um, kind of community over there, and I really enjoy interacting. Uh, really cool group of people. So thanks for your support, both financially and also for making such a nice place. Um, the other group is my YouTube subscribers. We just passed 10,300 subscribers, which is awesome. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you for all your kind comments, good suggestions, and input about the videos. I appreciate that stuff. I also really appreciate the little financial contributions like the buy me a coffee and the super thanks. That kind of stuff helps with buying supplies, which I go through pretty rapidly. So thanks for that. All right, let's get started on this video. These are a couple of my design idea books that are for sale in my merch store. You might want to check those out. I find them super handy. Ever since I started doing the YouTube channel, I started making sure to uh, making sure to sketch things out beforehand, and it really improved my outcome, I think. So it's got a nice grid pattern in the background to help you keep things sort of symmetrical. Not that you can tell by my drawings today, <laughs> but uh, let me show you what I have here. I have these um, six millimeter, I think they're six millimeter round citrines, uh, and they're actually quite pretty and quite orangey. So I'm going to make three pairs of earrings. Two are going to be bezel set, and one is going to have some um, home built prong settings. I'm going to try and do a three prong setting, which I've never actually done before on that one. So that'll be kind of fun. Uh, for the bezels, I pre-made some bezels so that it would save a little bit of time since we're doing three projects. If you want to learn how to do a faceted stone bezel, I'll put a link up there for you. Uh, check that video out. That's useful. Uh, it's not as hard to do as you might think. All right, so I'm going to make, uh, I think I'm going to do this one first. And I'm going to have a post right behind here. I think I'm going to make this out of 14 gauge square wire, uh, make two diamonds like this, uh, maybe one shorter than the other I think, just to give it kind of an oblong shape, and solder them together like that and probably flatten them out a little bit and at the top and the bottom to kind of flare it, and then we'll put that uh, bezel in between them. Uh, the second one is going to be pretty simple, we're going to have bezel right here and I'm just going to... Uh, I'll probably put the uh, the post right uh, behind the juncture of the two there, and this will just be some um, 18 gauge sheet, either that or some 10 gauge square that I um, flatten out with a hammer. I would use my rolling mill to do that, but my, I broke one of the rollers on my rolling mill. So, um, third thing, we're going to do something that has a little post. Oops post will be kind of behind there but the stone is going to be on a ring down here with three prongs and then I'm going to put some sheet up here that has some designs uh, punched into it. I figured out how to punch some designs with a little I have this little uh, just kind of a sharp punch that's kind of linear and I'll use that to punch those in. I may oxidize that one we'll see but it's going to be actually that was my initial drawing I think it'll be more like this one. I'm going to try and make it kind of like fan shaped up top there more. Um, so yeah, let's get started on those. I think we'll start with this one. So that's about uh, one centimeter. And that's a little bit less than one centimeter. So we'll go maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna do this in one piece and this in one piece and then solder them together like that. So we'll go a little bit more than two centimeters for this and a little bit under two centimeters for that. I have a live stream with my 
some of my patrons last night. It was nice. I got to see some people that I've communicated with, but didn't, you know, I've never actually met them in face to face. That was really nice. I even had one of my uh, Australian crew show up. So I did these ones about 22 and these ones about 18 millimeters. Spend a moment making sure those get to be about the same length because they're probably not perfect. One way to get a, pre a pretty precise measurement is to color the metal with a sharpie and then scratch a line um, where you want it to be cut or filed or whatever. Okay, let's do the same thing with these. I'm going to do this in front of the camera. You might want to do it on your bench pin. Makes it a little bit easier probably, but I'm going to file a notch in that spot right there. And I want to, I'm using the corner of my uh, file here. If you want to, I guess you could hang it out of a microwave or something like that. I'm going to file it, you know, at a 45 degree angle like that, about halfway through. And once you do that, then I'm going to take this and I'm going to bend it. Might go just a tiny bit more through on these ones because they have to bend a little bit sharper. At least in my brain, that's what I'm seeing. <laughs> One thing I need to make sure is that I'm going to have enough room for these bezels, as I said. That's pretty close. I don't know. Let's try that. We can always redo it if we need to. But I think that'll work if I just solder these and then file these straight across. Okay, I'm going to solder those closed just so that I can at least the ends of them first, where, the, where I made the, the cut. And I'm just going to cut some little tiny pieces of hard silver solder. If you've never been to my channel, I use primarily hard silver solder. And I use a liquid flux called Mighty Flux. I do a lot of pick soldering too. If you're interested in pick soldering, I'll put a link up there for you. I just picked it up on the end of the pick there.
Just trying to get these relatively the same. They look pretty good. I'm going to file these straight across. Keep an eye on whether both sides are the same length because uh, it's always the possibility I was slightly off on my uh, slot that I filed in the center. These look pretty good. Let's solder those together. I'm using pretty small pieces of solder. I could probably use bigger ones, but I don't probably need too much here. The excess will file off anyway. Pretty good, I think. What do you say we flare these a little bit? I'll use my chasing hammer. So I want them to be kind of like gradually wider as they go down. Try and get them pretty. Symmetrical. All right. It's probably enough solder down there in that corner to do it, but I'm just going to make sure by having some extra. look pretty symmetrical to me. This is called a magnesia block and it's a little bit softer surface and you can push things down into it. So I'm going to flip these upside down and I'm going to put a post on the back of them. And it's a real easy way to put a post on if you've never done this. So I'm just going to take this and push this into the pan. Okay. That way nothing's going to move very much if something happens to reflow. <laughs> so I'm going to put it, be putting a post right here and right here. And to do that, here's some 20 gauge wire that I made the other day. Been low on supplies lately, so I had to recycle some scrap. But it's kind of nice to be able to do that. So, so I'm going to cut a couple of pieces of this 20 gauge. Longer than I'm going to be leaving it, but let's 
file the ends flat. Start with, let's make sure there's some solder. There's still a bit of solder here. One there, one there. Yeah, there's a few in there. So I'm gonna grab this with my tweezers. Let's flux the back of these. Just set this on top of a piece of solder. Heat the wire till it balls up on the end. You should be able to just kind of like heat this earring up to the point where it's hot enough. And once it is, just turn it down here and have it stick to it like that. Let's see if we can do that a second time. Come back and I will taunt you a second time. These are ready to go. Um, Far as putting them in the pickle, so I get the stuff off of them. One thing I will do uh, after I clean them up and they're all polished, I will take these wires which have become annealed by uh, heating over and over again here, and that's going to make them really soft and flimsy. So. In order to get these stiff and, and more wire-like uh, for ear posts, I'll, I'll bend a corner over here and I'll twist it three or four times. Uh, and that work hardens the entire length of it, so it makes it much stiffer. And then we can cut it off to the right length. So put those in the pickle and get to work on the next ones. So for the second one we're going to do, we're just basically going to mount a bezel, which I pre-made. And then I cut a couple of strips of 18 gauge. And I calculated this is about 13 millimeters wide, and so when you multiply it out by pi, you end up with 40.82 millimeters. So these are about that long. We'll see how close we get on the size. But first we need to solder these together, at least the ends together. So let's do that. Cut a little bit of fresh solder to make sure we have some ready to go. and then I'll probably use a jump ring manual to round these out a little further. Normally I'd brace this against something, but I'm doing it in, in front of the camera for you. Cut these about, uh, I forgot to 
measure these in front of you. Maybe three and a half millimeters. Okay, so one of the things I want to do is when I solder these on, I want them to be set back a little bit like that so that I can have room to work with the stone up front. And um, so let's uh, use a magnesia block again. sort of that. And I think I'm going to make a mark on here about how deep I want that to go. I can set this on the surface. Push that in. Maybe. <laughs> Do. Okay. Use the size that's not covered in flux. That's about right. totally turn these into snowman earrings <laughs> if I wasn't already sick of winter time. So the thing about these magnesia blocks is part of your bezel's buried in there. And in order to get that hot enough for that to stick to it, you got to kind of focus a little bit more heat on there to really pump some heat into the thing so it kind of gets the entire thing hot. I think while I'm here, since this one's already in here, I'm going to go ahead and attach an ear wire, or not an ear wire, a, a post right about there. And then we'll do the second one. solder on there. Remember that buried part, you got to focus more heat on there. Looks like I got them both pretty centered. So I'm going to pickle those and we'll work on the third pair. Remember, we're going to have a little three prong setting and then uh, a little fan thing up here. So I made one of these fans. They're a little bit bigger than I drew there, but that's okay. And I'm going to trace that out on here and then cut it out. So I'm not going to make you watch me do that because I'm basically I'm just going to use the shears and then probably use the Dremel and the file to, to get it the same shape. But I, I traced that with this one. That's why I made one in the first place so I could have a template. So I'll be right back. So I got these two to be pretty Pretty symmetrical, I think. Okay, so I think I want to draw some designs on here, and let's do that with that little black marker.
I guess I'm going to let that dry for a minute. Yeah, I have no idea where I got this stamp thing from. <laughs> so you might have to improvise. You could use the I in a letter set to do this, but I'm just basically going to tap tap these into place. Oops. I'm guessing my finger is probably in the way when I do this. I have those pretty much made. So now we need to find some of this. So where did I put that? This is some 16 gauge square. I was going to make these uh, the bases of the prong settings out of. And what I want to do is I want to make a square that's just slightly bigger than the stone, for, or a circle that's just slightly bigger than the stone for both of these. And then I'm going to mount three prongs on top of each one. Square wire has a tendency to twist on you. Kind of try and correct that as you go. You could wrap these around a jump ring mandrel or bail making pliers if you prefer. It's pretty close. Let's see if I can cut this off and get the ends lined up and we'll see how the stone sits on top of it. What I really care about on these is that the girdle of the stone, which is the widest part, where the pavilion and the crown come together, I want that to sit on the inside lip of this and then I'm going to mount those prongs in three spots here. So I'm going to try and do that next after I get this one, and I'll solder this together beforehand. So let's make the second one of these. I have the stones upside down just because they're easier to sit because the pavilions may poke through just a little bit. I just want to make sure that I have pretty close to an equal amount around the outside. Alright, those look like they'll work. I'm going to do a question and answer video one of these days, so if you have any questions about what I'm doing, you know, in the comments say, hey, I'd like this question talked about during a video try to fit it in there. file these little things like this flat. Sometimes it's easier to do if I have a little piece of tape on my finger to hold it.
one still looks a little bigger than the other one. I'm going to file it just a scratch. Okay, so I think I'm going to solder those onto those. Those onto those. And then I'm going to create a little cage to mount on top that's got three prongs that'll mount right on the top of that circle. So let's get these soldered together. up a little solder. Come here. Don't be bashful. <laughs> Sometimes with pick soldering the hardest part is picking up the little bit of solder. The trick to doing it well though is getting both pieces up to temperature before you stick it in there. which I was a little bit uh, too soon on that one, but close enough. Okay, let's set those to the side for the moment. And I need to find some 18 gauge. So I need to make a three-prong setting, and so I want to solder, uh, I think I'm going to do a V and then a projecting point out of here. So let's, it doesn't have to be super long, it just has to be long enough to kind of tent over the top of this thing. Sometimes, this stuff called polar graph paper comes in super handy if you want, like, pencil. You know, 360 all the way around, right? So, 120 is each one. So, if we're starting, let's say we have one right here. Center this over that central point. Make a, a mark right there for one of the prongs. Then we go 120. Let's see, so we got that's 30, 60, 90, 120. So right, right 
excited about there. There we go. 30, 60, 90, 120. So right about there. I guess pretty close. Triple points. Let's do that on the other one. Let's bend these down into kind of a little tent shape. Try and cut them off pretty close to the same length. I'll bring this over so you can kind of see what I'm doing better. I want this to solder kind of to the outside edge, the top of the outside edge, I should say. So once I get these uh, lined up where I want them, that's surprisingly close. <laughs> I may not have to do much on this one, but that's uh, that's pretty good. So I'll just uh, I'm going to solder those down on there, and then uh, same way on this one, and then we'll add a post on the back. So let's do that. That's pretty good. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pick a little solder on each corner there. Hopefully, we'll see if I can pull this off without bumping things too bad. Quite a bit of mass in this compared to the little wires, so I'm gonna heat mostly the bottom. Add a little bit more in this one just to make sure. Pretty centered. Okay. Um, I'm probably not going to, since we got a free project video, set all these stones in front of you. So if you, like I said, if you want to see me set a bezel set of faceted stone, there's that video I mentioned earlier. All right. Be back with some finished pieces. Here's my finished products. Got these ones here. They're in my grubby hands. So I think those ones came out okay. I really like these ones. I was surprised I liked these ones so much. But I do. <clears throat> and these ones, those came out pretty good. Could have been a little more consistent on the decoration part up there, but next time I'll be a little more careful about that. So, overall, I like them. All right, I'll take some better pictures and put them at the end. 
All right, well, that was the three different citrine uh, post earring designs. I hope you enjoy that. If you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave and take a moment and check out a few of my other videos. I have over 300 now, so there's lots of content here to peruse. I think you can probably find something of interest. And after you've done that, um, subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Um, the other thing you should do is check out the video description down below. There's some important links down there. There's a link to my website where you can buy my jewelry if you're interested. Uh, there's a link to my merch store where you can get one of those nice design idea books or a funny mug or something like that. There's also a link to buy me a coffee which gives me a little cash influx to buy supplies with, so that's nice. And finally, there's a link to my Patreon. So check that out. Come back and visit again, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Happy silversmithing.